Here in Fusion 360, I have a fully defined sketch. It has a rectangle on the bottom and two spline points that curve around the top. Everything is black and the sketch has a padlock. Remember, to fully define a spline, you need to dimension the distance of the control arm, show the angle of the control arm relative to another line in your sketch, and show the position of the control point in space. In addition to those splines, I also have this rectangle that is perpendicular to the first control point. I want to be able to repeat this rectangle around my spline to represent notches in a laser cut print. How can I do that? First, let's make this into a body by pressing E. We can click all of the faces that we want in our extrude, and then we can type eight millimeters. Now we have a new body. Your sketch may disappear. If it does, just click the eyeball to see it again. Now I wanna make two more extrudes. So click the extrude button or press E. This time I'm gonna type eight and I'm gonna make sure it says cut. I'm going to click the extrude button again, click the same profile, this time I'm going to click symmetric and I'm going to type eight. Now it'll stick out a little bit on both sides for this example. And I don't want to join, I want to create a new body. Click okay. So now I just have two bodies with one of them being a little notch inside. How can I make these go all the way around? Well, we can create a pattern along a path. In the create menu, select pattern and then pattern on path. It asks us what type of object we want to pattern. We can pattern faces, bodies, features, or components. I'm going to click feature. I'm going to click the second extrude that made the nub, and I'm gonna click the first extrude that made the cut. Then we have to select the path. For the path, I'm gonna select this spline from the sketch. It tells us we have an invalid input setting. That's because we haven't given it the rest of the information. There are two ways to define it. We can go extent or spacing. Extent means how long do you want this pattern to go. Spacing means how much distance in between each object do you want. Let's go ahead and see the difference between these. So if we do extent, we can drag this all the way around until it snaps to that point on the end. Then we can define how many we want. And if you look at this, all of them are going at the same angle. Sometimes this is desired behavior, but in this case, I don't want it to look like that. So I'm going to change the orientation to path direction. Now these will flow along the path and I can create as many as I want and they will fit in there. I can also use the suppress. So you see these check marks. If I uncheck suppress, that's not an option. But if I check this suppress button, then I can eliminate individual pieces that won't show up in the pattern. This can be convenient if you have one that's awkwardly placed. So now let's look at the spacing option instead of extent. So spacing is a little bit different. At first you might think, well, nothing has changed. That's because it automatically calculated the spacing based on the previous setting. Now if I move the arrow, I'm not changing how far the pattern goes. I'm changing how far apart each piece of the pattern is. As you can see, they go evenly around and I need to increase the number to make it around for that narrow spacing. Or if I increase the spacing, I need to decrease the quantity of the objects. Of course, I could suppress these objects too, but there's no need to calculate them if they're not needed. So now I have this pattern that goes all the way around. And if I press OK, it calculates this. And I have all of these nubs inside, and if I hide any of them, it will also have this cutout. This is a very convenient way that I can put features along a contour, such as a spline or other geometry. And the good thing about this, it's all parametric. So I can go back in and change different parameters to make the design look the way that I want.